So empty crucible. And then we're going to add in our mystery copper chloride hydrate. Until we get about at least a gram. So now we're going to take that and we're going to heat that until it changes color and that blue green until it's completely brown. Alright, so we have our hydrate here and we're now going to heat it. So we're going to light our Bunsen burner. So it's been heating for a little bit here, we're not done yet. Just gonna show you there. We have the brown color changing from the blue green. We're gonna swirl it around a little bit, continue heating. Try and get all of that broken up. All the water's gone. We wanna be gentle at this point, we don't wanna overheat it, cause any decomposition to occur beyond the water leaving. So as we start to kind of break up, you should be able to see a little flash of green in there. We want to break this up, trying not to get any of this on our scupula. We want to get rid of all that water. So we're going to do a little gentle heating after this, after we kind of tried to get as much surface area available as we can. So this is after our first heating, so we're going to go ahead and get that number down, and then we're going to, going to go ahead and do it again, make sure it's done. So we've done a little bit more heating, it's gone down very, very slightly. Keep in mind this is probably a little testing the accuracy of the thing, so we're going to go ahead and call that good there, write that down as our final. So we're now going to continue our reaction, what we're going to do is we're going to take the crystals that are in here, put them in a beaker, we'll get the rest in a second, I'll let that cool down a little more, let's get that a nice white background there, so you can see the brown color and now we're going to add water to it, and as we do you can see it changing back into its hydrated color, go ahead and swirl it around, And then we want to make sure we didn't miss any in the crucible as well. Just in case we're still a little warm there, we'll go ahead and get the glove. rinsing and one more for good measure. Okay so now we have a copper chloride hydrate again but we know how much water was in the compound at this point. So now what we want to do is we want to isolate either the copper or the chlorine. So to do that what we're going to do is we're now going to add some aluminum wire that's going to displace the copper and then we're going to end up filtering that. So you want to be careful with the ends here. We're going to bend it away from the ends because they're sharp. We're going to stick those pieces in there. 
and we're going to leave them in there until the solution goes from blue to colorless. I'll go ahead and zoom in here so we can see this. We're now getting to the point where the blue color is starting to go away. Oh, not quite there yet, but in the meantime we're going to get ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom back out. And we are going to get our filtration set up ready. So our filter paper, we're going to get the mass of that. It is 0.985. Now what we're going to do is we're going to filter the copper from this from this solution, uh, and we're going to see how much copper is left. When we're done, we're going to fill in what the filter paper plus the copper is after it's been rinsed and dried overnight. So when we're setting up, what we want to do really is we just want to get all of the copper on there possible. Um, so put your filter paper in here, get it nice and centered, push down in the middle. Okay, and there we have our filter paper. We're going to add a little bit of water to get that to hold its shape. So when we add the rest that it doesn't fold back. Okay. So we have a couple of options here with what to do with this. We can try and take the uh, aluminum wire out first. And we're going to help clear up any of the salts that are in here, we're going to help them dissolve a little better by adding a little bit of 6 molar HCl. Okay, the alternative is we can also take this and we can just move the whole thing over to here, which is what I think I would like to do. And then we can scrape the copper out onto the filter paper after we've rinsed it. It looks like we have a little bit of HCl going on there. We can see the hydrogen gas evolution. What we want to start doing is we now want to start scraping off the copper from the wiring. We want to separate that wire out. So we can just remove it completely. And then we're going to rinse pretty decently here. Get rid of all the salts that might be dissolved in the solution after we've had this initial run through for the filtration. So now the aluminum's been moved. You can see that the fizzing has stopped in the HCl. We're no longer getting a hydrogen gas. We're going to let that filter through. We're going to do a couple rinsings, and then we're going to get the mass after the whole thing dries. And we should be able to figure out our formula. So on our last step here, we're just going to get the mass of the copper that's left in our filter paper. 
and you can see we have a little bit of residue here, which means that we didn't properly wash completely the filter paper, but otherwise we have our pure copper there. And we're going to set that on here. And so the difference between that and our filter paper, we can then go ahead and figure out how much copper there is. So we now have enough information to figure out how many grams of water, and therefore how many moles, how many grams of copper, and therefore how many moles, and how many grams of chloride, and how many moles. And we can therefore figure out our formula as the ratio of those moles.